maybe not. Uh, and I'm like, she's like glancing at the rest of the group to see how the group reacts to the idea of Blossom coming. I think we know Golaneth's response, which is, which is like a visible scowl. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. How is Rue looking? Uh, have we... I mean, I know, like, we briefly met Tansy in, like, the Fae Wild. Like, did we see any, like, any magic from them or, like... Uh, I'll leave that up to Tansy. What, Tansy, what would can you, you bring magic? to the table, Tansy? <laughs> what? New magic? I mean, uh, sure. Our, like, can you... I don't want to be mean. Well, I'm just going to be direct. Like, if we bring, if you come with us, like, there's a possibility where, like, um, you may die, which Maggie was alluding to. So can you help oh. yourself? Yeah. Because we may not always oh, be able yeah, to yeah, help Oh, yeah, no, 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 I trained, I trained. So I can, I, I can cast illusions. I use my paintings and I cast illusions. And other spells. Yeah. That's my favorite. Magic painting. Uh, Magic painting. Also, I have this. And she shows a crossbow. Look, I have this. Okay. Yeah. I um, I believe Belinda uses a crossbow to do very well as well, right? I, I mean... If you're asking if I've ever used it in a fight, the answer would be no. But if you're asking if I can hit targets of different sizes and places, the answer would be yes. Have you ever been in a fight? Not a violent one. Ah, like a fight of words. That's different. Yeah. How many of us had been in a fight? When we were, you know, going through the desert before all of that, how many of us had? I, I hadn't. Well, I, that makes sense with your with your parents, uh, Beldis. Um, yeah. I mean, okay, so it, it was part of our cultural. I mean, kind of cultural it's part of the upbringing, is you know. A, the first time I've been into a oh, fight. Oh, you know what? I mean, there was the training fights, and you know. Right, but a, a person might try to kill you fight. Oh, oh, the first one of that. Wow. That was, that was. Oh, that was some time ago. It was shortly after I left home. And during the first caravan I was actually traveling with. And um, it was um, it was a drunkard uh, with with one of the mer merchants. Um, it was one of their more personal help. I don't remember the, exactly, but they got belligerent one evening, and I mean they you know, typical said some stupid stuff, and I said some stupid stuff back and it just sort of escalated from there. And next thing you know, we got a little close heated and uh, they pulled a knife. And that was um, relatively unpleasant. And I was, uh, we wrestled and we tussled and, uh, oh, I mean, I, I was not prepared for that situation at all. Where is it? That's when, that's when I first met, no cards, where are you? Excuse me one second as I desperately look for who my friends are. are. Why is it not on one of these cards? They're all supposed to be together. Oh, girl. Oh, that's when I first, I can't even think of her name. Uh, Sarah's friend daughter? name, eh? Huh? Gianni? Gianni, thank you. I knew I was close for that. <laughs> and she walked right up behind him, grabbed him by the back of the neck, and just threw him 
aside without problem. Oh, that was a long time ago. Does well, he have a thing for her? Insight check. Do I need to insight check? No, you don't. <laughs> I vaguely, That's a really obvious one. Baldus, did you have... Uh, did you have a discussion about them and mention them in season one with? We had a flashback episode where we yeah, were talking. So that's what it, it was. but it was a flashback, so yeah. it's not like yeah. No, it's it's not a secret. Okay. Um, it's just um, not one that I frequently bring up. But yeah, that was that was my first real fight, and you know I was. An interesting ex adrenaline filled experience that uh was also a good first lesson in uh have friends that can back you up because sometimes you know it doesn't go well. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Rue. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Goloneth, wherever you are. I think my I guess first real oh, fight sorry. um was when me and my friends were selling pies outside of my house, and the older kids attacked us for the little money that we made, and my parents didn't do anything to help. And she looks pointedly at them. <laughs> and that would be my first fight. Wow. Hi. Can I show you magic? Sure. Uh, so, uh, Tansy is going to cast Program Delusion, but, like, for something fairly useless in that she's going to create a dance party illusion. So it's 30 feet. It lasts 15 minutes. It lasts five minutes. Uh -huh. And, uh, but it's, like, literally she's just creating, like, a dance party. And the people in it are going to be <laughs> dancing to me. She's like, look. Um, and then you have to have a condition. Normally it would be like someone does something, but she's just going to snap for it because she's showing off. Yeah. She's like. Oh. Nice. Loud, but impressive. Thank you. I, I can stop it if we want, but like, I just I, wanted to show you. I, I'm going with the beat. I'm going with the, I'm going with the Veldus. Okay. You're, you're it's, yeah, you're done. It's it's fine. very yeah, very impressive. I'm I'm very impressed. Uh, but I think the point that I was making, Tansy, is that I hadn't been in a fight before I started to be with this group, and I learned. And I mean, that's why I'm here. I want to learn. Exactly. You're not less valuable just because you haven't done that one thing. Oh, thank you. But also, you got to be aware that you got to learn a lot about that one thing. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Right. 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 Want some advice? Yeah. Okay. I think. Okay. Well, we're going to start with rule one. Uh, rule one: best way to get the best way to get out of a fight is to not get in one to begin with. That That's more of a sense. rule zero. Sometimes you can't avoid that. The real rule one is um, don't die. Oh. Now there's a lot of ways you can apply rule one and see fit to each situation. But if you think see, that oh, this might kill me, that might not be the best way to go that route. See, I thought that you were going to be telling me how to do rule one. Right, that is important. That I mean, I, I mean, you know, best way to do rule one is to not be in the fight or to get away from the fight or just to be out of reach of the part of the fight that's going to violate rule one. That seems or, antithetical to why I'm here. Or to kill the other one who is trying to kill you. Now, that's an extreme response to, to uh, enforce rule one is to end the fight on terms you're okay with that you're surviving the fight. You're here because you don't want to run from danger. Yeah. Yeah. Also, wait, you... why are they trying to kill us? Like, I understand why, like, the army might want to kill us, but, like, 
who are these other people? Like, why? You know, it just happens a lot where we go. It's just a thing that comes up a lot. Occupational hazard? Yeah, they're occupational hazard. Oh. Okay. Yeah, there was, you know, it's like, you know, uh, evil servants of a, a, a dead god kind of thing. And like, you know, um, uh, people trying to take over their government uh, kind of thing. And then, you know, the, oh, yeah, no, it just seems to, it ha happens. I mean, yeah, the, the sucking eternal nothingness of the void between the stars wanting to take over and turn this into, you know, minor, minor things like right, that. Right, right. And like a, a worldwide infection of, of malice, which causes people to stir up and, and be uh, cruel and, and evil to one another. Oh, but if so, that happened, know. would we want to, we wouldn't want to kill them though. We'd want to heal them, right? If we could, depending on, you know, if we needed to kill them in order to not be killed. That makes sense. Which okay. circles back to rule one. Right. 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 So don't get killed. Right. I mean, that's, it sounds very simple, but you'll learn there's multiple layers of nuance. It's like this pie that we have right here, where you have the top layer where it's like, ooh, this is mushroom infused. And that's, you think it's full <laughs> of pie. And then you get down, you realize there's a variety of egg in here as well. Some crust, some seasoning. And that, that all goes together to observe, you know, rule one is a pie. Don't die. Mm. Well, I do like pie. Then you should love rule one. And okay. more. <laughs> uh, I guess speaking of the um, malice and malevolence, um, parents, to you, you are but dragon hunters. There is an ancient dragon afflicting. My guy Beldis over here. Have you heard of anything like that? Turning his whole city to stone? An ancient dragon, right? Yeah, that's the story. And I'm thinking, based off recent events and discoveries, the truth is like this pie, much more layered and nuanced with all the ingredients involved. <laughs> uh, so Belinda blinks and is like, dot starts speaking. She's like, darling, I think I would have heard of something like that. And then Booker goes, yeah, I've heard of it. Uh, that's the Crystal Caverns, right? Oh. Yeah. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. Um, if I, if I may, dear. Oh, of course, dear. You know I love to watch you talk. Uh. That was uh, the ancient dragon. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here as Graham scrolls <laughs> the notes. Uh, that was Vathramar, uh, an ancient worm, from from what I recall. Um, long thought lost, from my understanding, with the ancient dwarven homeland of uh, Mondag Tithe. Yep. So you're saying this dragon is currently afflicting more people or just the curse or whatever is happening to those dwarves is related? We gotta go with relation right now because it's vaguely mysterious and possibly not what we previously thought. And I'm sure the next time I have an out of my body, but in someone else's body experience, because those are happening, by the way, um, that, you know, some more light will be shed on the subject. But at this time here, I think the dragon is. Okay, now I got to put thought into this here, because I guess I haven't really connect tried connecting these dots before. 
So the dragon is either A, an innocent evil bystander in the affliction of my people and are turning to stone. B, a pawn in the scheme to have my people kind of turn into stone as we try to hold back a greater greater ancient dark and evil that exists between stars and realities. Yeah, that, that sounds... That sound about right? Am I oversimplifying it? I don't know. No, I, it makes sense. It's not a curse so much as it is a horrible lesser of two evils that your people I, at some point chose. Or was chosen for it, yeah. Uh, right, right. But, could be, could be, could be chosen for them. It, you it, know it what? wasn't clear to me. It's actually, you know, in a perfect world where simple solutions exist, having a conversation with the dragon over that whole scenario might be a worthwhile topic to pursue so dear are you trying to suggest that we should hunt down this dragon for you and find them well, because it seems that's I, kind of what you're getting at i i i mean <laughs> sure there's an entire cavern of dwarves who are you know ran from their ancestral home because of this dragon that are going to say yeah that sounds like a great idea however there's been attempts to do that, and um, they haven't ended well. I mean, we're assuming but, they've ended because nothing has come back from them or heard and, of them. And if you hunt uh, uh, the dragon the way that I, my understanding is that you do, right, you would, <clears throat> uh, like, kill the dragon, which is not what we want. We want to be able to talk to the dragon, and I don't expect that you could imprison an ancient dragon and bring it to us alive. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> P check. P check. That wow. could mean so many things. Oh, my charisma is low. But you do have a D6. That is actually caught. Okay, I'll take the D6. And maybe Bardic inspiration? Uh, I haven't gotten Bardic Inspiration. It's a 16. Is there Bardic Inspiration applicable moments in this conversation? Uh, yeah. Apply? I would say you then know Maggie well enough that you know Maggie's about to make a case in your yeah, interest. This, it... Sorry, so I saw Bob hold up a card at one point, and I don't know if it was for Bob anyone is trying or to get if you were testing. Work, but it's just not doing it. <laughs> yeah, the right. webcam is not behaving. Blossom! Am I, am I adding a die to this? <laughs> yes, add a 1d10. Yes. And what I'm trying to do is persuade them not to kill this dragon. Not necessarily not to help us find it, but not to kill it. We, we kind of know 18. Really... 18. All right. So, uh, as you mentioned trapping the dragon, uh, you know, we, we, need some, we need some music in there. Because this should be a concerning moment. <laughs> Buka's face <laughs> gets this almost uh, fervent look of someone that mm -hmm. something you have said has posed a challenge that they have not done yet. And there is a Shit. distinct moment when it goes cl clicks and she, you see the gears turning in her head, in this halfling woman's head, as she is like, how would I trap the dragon? What would go into that? And there was like a glazed look. And Rue, you've seen this before. Like every time your mother's left you to go hunt a dragon or uh, focused on a project, they do it at 100% gusto, maybe 110%. And you see that kind of divestment from one of your moms as she is like in the process of like, how would I do it? What would I need? And toy with a bunch no. of different options. Uh, yeah, uh, let's uh, let's maybe reverse those cogs a little bit. And how about instead of uh, uh, you, maybe you just uh, point us in the direction of where we where? Well, hold on. Bathroom mayor is maybe in Mong Tog Tai. Is that what I've you, you've been telling us? Uh, yeah. Um, well, what your mother said was it's in. Potentially in Mondag Tithe, um, long lost dwarven city, I suppose, probably. Um, but you, you, what you're saying is you want to join the family business. 
Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, hun- it, you know what? Yes. Yes. Um, but I think this is what me and the me and the crew need to do on our own. If if you can just guide us in the right direction, maybe get an idea on how to trap. And uh, yeah. Um going to just speak up and say that I'm not honestly suggesting we go and try to trap a large ancient dragon at this particular time and juncture. I just I, I do enjoy living. Right. Rule number one. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, exactly. but we we want to, to maybe be able to talk to it. Do any of you know Draconic? Yes. Nope. Translators are a thing that we could <laughs> utilize. Potentially. Um, do you know what color dragon it is? Uh, shadow and death. So is that a black dragon, or is that a shadow dragon? Is that a, a alliteration to a dracolich? You know, the stories aren't terribly specific in that particular part. Uh, Its breath was nothing but death. The plant life wiltered around it. Um, Spears and arrows did nothing to penetrate the armor. It went through hundreds of people in a single gulp. Uh, the very air around it was noxious and would cause others to fall over and gasp for the li- very living breath as their hearts stopped beating and general unpleasantness seemed to follow. That all seems very specific. And how dwarves have like 30 different ro- words for rocks. How do you not have one descriptor for this dragon that is specific? I think a big part of it is there was a whole lot of running and screaming as we were fleeing the time at the time. And I don't know how many people who that got a really good look at it survived that particular time. So, you, you know, the stories kind of go and they grow and then they get told one way or another. And then you kind of have to sit back and decipher a little bit. And you're kind of saying, oh. You know, we don't know, and this is the best way we can kind of tell it in a way that's easy to remember and go forward. So we're sure it's not a myth or a metaphor or even a misperception. Graham? It's entirely could be. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, yeah, I mean, you know, it. it again, the survivor, the people who probably got the closest look at it probably had the least chance of surviving it. So it could have been something else, absolutely. Uh, but it has a name, it has a reputation, so the idea that it truly exists is likely. I, or that it was you... blamed for it is also possible. But it could be innocent. Or but that it could have you... been some other form walking around in dragon-like shape mm. that okay nope nope not not hi how's everyone else doing tonight isn't it a good thing we did today right uh, up, we, but i just i yeah the two of you must do a lot of research as part of your work oh of course you know we find where um where they live, um, if they have loved ones, uh, if they are vicious, if they have plans of attack, uh, if they are prudent to run. Uh, we try to cover all of our bases as well as, you know, um, likely fallbacks within their caves, any artifacts that they may have uh, hoarded away. What about their histories? Oh, of course. Um, uh. Typically, that's one of the first things we do. Um, You'd be surprised how many uh, younger dragons adopt names of more ferocious dragons in an attempt to uh, dissuade hunters or to dissuade foes. Then maybe Rue's suggestion that you gather information for us would be a good first step. 
We can absolutely try to do that. Um, we'll also most likely come up with a trap that you could potentially use. You, if it's a dragon as old as... How, how old was did the dwarves get chased away? Uh, wings that covered the night sky. So, you know, we're going to say pretty big. Really big. Really big. Well, um, if yeah, you do you know. choose to talk to this, you should have a fallback plan. Um, in our experience, uh, talking to dragons, even if they are more sociable than others is typically in the dragon's favor. Leveraging the scales a bit, so to speak, doesn't hurt. Tell you what. So I'm feeling frisky with this idea suddenly. That or else it's just the uh, wonderful pie talking. I'm not 100% sure, but... Find out what you can. Hey, my camera's working. Find out what you can so that I could claim to have a working knowledge of what and who this dragon may or may not be. So that maybe we can try a uh, communication on our terms more so than the dragon's terms. And that's stretching greatly what I'm capable of. But you know what? Hey, if I can if I can have a dream conversation with a drag with a stone statue and talk to a tiny princess trapped in a bottle, yeah, maybe I'm yeah sure absolutely. Tell you what, here's uh, thirty gold. Find out find out as much working living knowledge you can about the dragon that assaulted the original homeland of the of the dwarf from the crystal caverns. Well, Belthus, um, I actually. Have, you know we have mean. a name. Uh, I just need some components, and I may be able to get more information. I just have... need, like, a lot of incense and some ivory. Um, how much? Like, a lot of incense. Oh, like a big old bundle of incense. Well, I guess it just depends on how nice it is. Like it's kind of the incense that we make? Can we make incense? I don't see why not. Can, and then also it, it's price subjective. Like if I just had one thing of incense, I'd be like, hey, this is worth 250 gold. Uh, boom, right? <laughs> In a place with no incense. That's fair. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, we made almost everything that we had out of out of the woods where I grew up. There must be a way to, to make incense. Certainly we knew how to make scents that we would use. We didn't glue them to a stick or anything, but it we should be able to, if that is what we need. We can figure that out, at least. Tansy, what are your thoughts on the dragon? You've been awfully quiet. I've never seen a dragon before. So like, I was just gonna, you guys seem like you know what you're doing and I'm here to help, right? So like, I just gonna, well, I think I was just gonna do what you guys want to do. Have, have you seen any paintings that fit, um... The description of the dragon in the Feywild during your time working there. You know, maybe. Would you like to roll a check? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. First Tansy roll of the campaign. Uh, Yay! And just so Tansy knows, because Pharaoh loves us very much, we all currently have a uh, free crit. A flea crit from Pharaoh. Oh my gosh, you are being oh, spoiled. Oh, and considering we are, don't have that much longer tonight, depending they do on how roll this over. goes, it might be better use it. Yeah. What? The crits yeah. do roll over. Oh, they do roll over. Yes. Okay. Uh, so should I be rolling? Uh, roll me a history check. 
history. Oh, that's an eight. An eight. Uh, wow, hold on. Okay, okay. I'm holding. Because I have luck. Oh, going to use it to reroll? Yeah, I'll use it to reroll. Okay. Why not? I'm here for it. Okay, let's do this again. There we go. That's 20. 20. All right. Well, you know, I'm going to keep the music. Um, Tansy, there's a part of one of the Feywild collections that you uh, were given a tour of uh, many years ago. And for mm -hmm. a moment, you kind of start processing through all the art you've done, all the art you've seen. And you remember a ward. Uh, like a section of this collection that had been kind of roped off, but you were able to be given access to. Um, and the art collector behind it was this uh, very, very extravagant Eladrin prince, uh, the Prince of Winter. And in his collection, he had a series of paintings. But as you're thinking about dragons, there's one painting that stands out in particular. It was called Locked Shut. And the painting was of a stone door uh, with a dark kind of gap in between. And there were these heavy chains kind of wrapping around this door. And in back of the door was a maw. At the time, you didn't necessarily know it was a dragon's maw, but as you're being described this scenario and thinking about it, the mouth that was closing over the door was definitely a dragon's mouth in the painting. And this painting is centuries okay. old, centuries old um, of an unknown artist. Okay. So I'm going to describe that painting to the group. Be like, I saw, so actually, this one time I was, well, I was looking at the Prince of Winter's like private collections and it's a lot of, a lot of very old paintings dragons and you know I don't even remember what I was looking for but I saw this and she describes the painting hopefully close to as vividly as you described it um, do you think that's it and the, the painting was a chain door with the dragons like kind of maw around around it yeah yeah. Does that even help? Like, where was that door? Was the, the door made of stone brickwork? Mm-hmm. Chains double-crossed over the front of it? Yeah. Were the walls wet? You know, I, I'll I'll confirm this for you. Yes, I can't remember, but yeah, okay, yeah, I think so. Wow. Okay. Huh. Ram, just so I'm confirming, right? This is very similar to the. Okay, great. To the what? You said you saw this as a painting. Tell our audience yeah. your thought process, Bob. <laughs> Give it so, to us, Bob. So, <laughs> Give us context clues. Sorry. Uh, so back 
um, before the day of the ooze and the caverns, and I was having the conversation with Reginald, the stone statue, who apparently is conscious and awake. Uh, and in the conversation that we were having, when the walls started oozing, as they did, that door sort of formed in the wall, and that's... But you saw a painting of it. So something else has seen it. Yeah, I so, saw a painting of it, but how long, wait, how, when did you say? A month, two months ago? Is this? In a dream. In the dream oh, of the statue. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I mean, it's I've, like, it's, yeah. have you, have you had dreams like that before? I haven't talked to too many people in their dreams, and this was a new experience for me at that time. So it wasn't my this, dream. This painting was a few hundred years old. That would track. Okay. And you said this was in someone's private collection? Yeah. The Prince of Winter. Prince of Winter. Okay. Either someone survived or someone had powerful enough magic to observe it. Or someone planned it. Or has been planning it because something tried it yeah. millennia ago. And that's just their symbolization for it coming through. So when they tried it previously, and Ms. Nina, the Ms. Nina saw it. Original didn't see it, Ms. Nina saw it. Okay. All right. I need a moment to think this over, but a couple thoughts here to randomly throw out in case people come up with solutions. One. I think I need uh, is people getting in my head might not be the worst idea going forward in a way uh, Two people being able to come with me next time. I somehow randomly go into something else's slightly conscious unconsciousness. Cause that seems to be trending in my life right now. And the empire, the, the inquisitor wants those, Oh, wow. I'm going to turn to Rue's parents. Tell you what, if you can get me a lot of confirmable evidence on that dragon's existence, I'll double that payment of 30 gold. Golan is going to spot me on this, right, buddy? I'm going to pretend he said yes. And 50% of the treasure. Seventy-five percent, if you can get me a physical part of it. Deal. Yes. Oh, this... Wait. How a much physical money part of the dragon. Okay. Wow. I'm gonna roll something real quick, but this isn't gonna come uh, into uh, existence for a while. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna let you know that I'm rolling. You know, um, random D rolls are totally fine. I don't mean to be, you know, like uh, judgy or something or anything, but uh, we're really bad at relaxing. Yeah, yeah. Matt, remember, I decided to travel with everybody here to avoid relaxing. So, yay, high stress. Come, come dance. Let's let's come dance with me. Come. Uh, uh, okay. Is there still music going? Because I'm not playing right now. Yeah, yeah. The there's like a harpist playing in the background. We'll see. Excellent. Hey, yeah. how's it going? I'll take Velda's dancing and just sort of shut down any like serious kind of conversation that comes up in a completely obvious way. <laughs> Sounds good. That's fair.
All right. But what if? Okay. <laughs> Just. <laughs> All right. So I'll I think make... at this point, you know, you are on the dance floor dancing. There's a few other uh, people dancing around you. Um, Adalian and his wife. Uh, the two kids he at one point carried out and like put to bed the two tiefling kids you had seen in the inn. Uh, and at this point, the last advisor kind of walks in, the one that was watching the walls while everyone was feasting. Um, his name for his name uh, escapes me at this moment. Let's see. Uh, it was the one you all thought was super sketchy and was definitely a traitor. And then by the end, you were like, he might be a good guy. <laughs> he just looks really shady. Uh, Boris, I think. No, no, Boris was someone else. Oh, well, I'll come up with a name with him next week. <laughs> As he arrives into the hall. And uh, he grabs himself like a tankard of ale and a, uh, like a flan in passing. And looks at all... Uh, looks at all of you for a moment dancing and there is a look that he wants to tell you something but he decides against it seeing you dancing and goes to talk to a dalian you see him lean in and whisper something and then he leaves with the food and the ale he's taking the food <laughs> he's taking like a handful Uh, Maggie, your mic is muted, it looks like. So I was trying to do the press the the button and it didn't work. Um, if I make any attempt to dance close and with very high perception, try to hear what they're talking about, can I make an attempt for that? Sure. Roll me that perception check. Since I'm dancing close with Maggie. Uh, on a DC check of 15, uh, you will hear it. If your passive is higher than 15, you already hear it. Well, my passive is definitely higher than that, but I rolled a 16. 16? Yeah. Um, that my passive, my passive is 19. Is 19. Oh, yeah, the two of you are really yes. perceptive yeah. uh, from the dance floor. Uh, you hear him whisper, uh, Outpost 2 has seen the rangers that are on their way back. Sorry, that wasn't his voice. <clears throat> Outpost 2 has seen the rangers. They're on their way a satyr is not far behind. I'll continue to man the wall. And then he gives a nod to the wife. Um, good to see you again. And just kind of shuffles off back to the wall. I think Maggie, like, sort of ironically, uh, from our perspective, says, uh, well, that's good news, at least. Yeah, I agree. It's nice to have something go well. <laughs> hey, you nice. don't by chance think that maybe there's a connection between it's <laughs> Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. And I think that's where we're going to end tonight's session, is as you and Maggie kind of finish up your dance, uh, and the rest of you kind of settle to go to bed, I'm assuming, you know, you're not going to wait up all night for everyone to return. But we'll decide um, that next week, or in two weeks. So, until then, you know, let's uh, have our good, good, uh, night, good, good time of the night where we have to say goodbye. So, hello, chat. It's me, Graham, or Graham Crackers, and I had the delight of playing your DM tonight in Naren's Rest. And like all sessions, a session eventually has to come to an end. We can't play for six hours straight. Unfortunately. But, you know, if you enjoyed what you saw here tonight, feel free to tune in on many of the nights of the week. We do have other shows. For instance, this Friday, Duality Sly at 8 p.m. will be coming back where I will be playing Captain Kellum, Brightstar, your disaster wizard who just watched one of their companions get killed by a dragon and their airship crashed. It was terrifying. Uh, but also next Tuesday, uh, Shards of Anarion will be returning at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, uh, where oh. I will be bullying them more um, because they said Graham's rules are so bad, we should make him do another Twitter poll to increase the enemy's health. Ha ha ha. 
So, you know, when you see that Twitter post, please repost, like, and uh, send it around so that I can uh, inflict a little smidgen of pain back to them like they do to all my monsters. But uh, in two weeks, we will be back with Anarin's Rest at 7.30 Eastern Standard. So in two weeks, we will all be back. Uh, but enough about me. I want to know about the rest of my wonderful friends. Uh, so I'd love to know three things from each of them. Who are they? Where can we find them? And what projects can we support of theirs that they're currently working on? Because friends support friends. Are we going in order? Uh, uh, sorry, just left me. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's uh, uh, Down Islamis everywhere on the interwebs. And, um... I guess if you want to find me, I will be streaming occasionally on my channel. So I guess follow for notifications on when I'm doing that. And I just kicked my trash can. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Bob. I have not kicked my trash can, but it's dangerously close to being kickable. So we have that thing going. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter at Psychware One Eye. I'll also be doing some Twitch streaming some point later this week as I continue playing Final Fantasy VI randomizers in tournaments I'm terribly unqualified to be in. But hey, you gotta suck for a while before you can actually get kind of decent. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna say it: buy Bud Light, make Kid Rock cry some more. <laughs> Bud Light, you're a terrible beer, but I'm supporting you right now, buddy. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm Jen, and you can't find me on social media because I'm not there. Um, and unless and until my wife forces me to go on Instagram. <laughs> um, but uh, project that I'm working on on May 7th on Sword and Key um, at 2.30 Pacific, I'm going to be starting a six to eight session campaign of Brindlewood Bay. And it's set in the same setting that we and most of the cast and I did a Monster Hearts game about a year ago, all new characters, but there might be some. So that's what we're. That's what someone. Someone's gonna get killed. Come join us and find out who. And hi everyone. I'm Stacy Coffee. I projects I have going on right now. Uh. Nothing to internet if you are happen to be in New York City and want to come see some roller derby, let me know and I'll send you a ticket link. But otherwise, uh, mostly I am working on personal projects and taking pictures of my cat, which if you find me on Twitter or use that same handle for Instagram, you will find pictures of a very dramatic tuxedo cat. Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh. All right. You know, I was emotionally preparing myself because, you know, unfortunately everybody, we do have to go. And, uh, you know, it's not forever. And thank you, all you wonderful friends in the chat. Thank you, all the wonderful friends that follow and subscribe. Uh, the channel wouldn't be what it is without you. Uh, but, you know, goodbye for now. So until we see you again, please stay happy, stay healthy, stay hydrated, and we'll see you soon. So, goodbye for now. Don't kick your garbage can. <laughs> <laughs>